Noble McIntyre of McIntyre Law has thrown out the first pitch, and we're ready to roll between Oklahoma and Iowa State. Our pregame conversation with Patty Gasso, as always, is brought to you by Coca-Cola. Is Coke Zero the best Coke ever? Take a taste and find out for yourself. Nicole Mendez, it's time for today's Riverwind Keys to the game. What you got? For Iowa State, you're coming in to a pretty packed house. You want to be tough. Their last few games, they dropped within one run or two runs. Heartbreakers. You want to be tough. And then Oklahoma, we talked about it. Put it in your pocket. I would say it starts with pitching, being able to minimize those balls that are over the plate. But more importantly, being able to feel suffocating as a pitcher. You want to overwhelm the batter. If you're going to miss, it's going to be competitive. They feel that pressure. They feel like they can't let up. They can't take a single pitch off because they're just going right at them. Today's keys to the game brought to you by Riverwind Casino. Always a good time. Iowa State will hit first here in their all Cardinal red uniform. And a familiar name, Malaysia Ochoa. We'll dig in for the left side of the plate. Kelly Maxwell in the circle for the Sooners. The lefty stares in. And as she rocks and fires, the first pitch is in for a strike, and we are underway at 2.05 Central Time. Look at Caitlin Fournier getting this thing started as promised at 2.05. Great job. On the money. Here's the no ball, one strike pitch for Maxwell. That's up high, one and one. Joe Allen Minor, Ranches, Pull, Spellhog, Marin Andrews, Wardlow. Those are the starters for Iowa State. Probably the worst ever introduction of a starting lineup. Just last names, no positions or averages <laughs> or anything. Ochoa is hitting 365 on the season. The lefty takes ball two. You said it on Iowa State as we start our opponent preview, presented by Polson Tax Resolution and Accounting. Your tax problems don't care who you are, but we do. 9 and 10, but several close calls. Several close calls. 2-1. Low and in ball three. And again, whenever you have a team that has those close calls like that, they get hungry. But it's the difference between the team that keeps losing and the one that gets that win that starts to make that change is being able to be tough. Being able to be tough in those situations, draw those pitches, draw those at-bats, Get that extra defense. 3 1 is in for a strike, full count. 3 of their 10 losses are to Colorado State. Here's the 3 2. Ball 4. Not a good start. Jamie Pinkerton is, a, is an Oklahoma guy, graduated from the University of Tulsa. He's been on the job at Iowa State since 2018. This is his seventh season overall. Started his career back in 2001 at the University of Tulsa as their head coach. And here's Angelina Allen with a runner at first. Well, already the idea of minimizing walks. First pitch swinging fouled back for strike one. That storyline is one worth keeping an eye on. A couple of other notes here on Jamie real quick. He went to high school at Broken Arrow, was a 97 grad of the University of Tulsa as coach to Tulsa, Arkansas. Did an incredible job in Montana. And they like what he's doing for Iowa State softball, but they've been bit by the injury bug this season. The 0-1, swing and a miss on a ball in the dirt, strike two. Some people say, Nicole, I tend to talk a little bit more about Jamie because we went to college together. I would say that is an unfair assessment. <laughs> I worked with Jamie's older sister whenever I was in college. A younger sister, excuse me, when I was in college. The 0-2, low, two balls and two strikes. We worked in the sports information department. That's how we got our start. Everybody in sports, they know each other. Look at us now. Still in it. <laughs> Iowa State has won two of its last three games. And as we mentioned, lost three times to Colorado State last week. And the one-two fouled back. Looked like Ochoa may have been going over at first. Look at the 9 and 10 Cyclones brought to you by Polston Tax Resolution and Accounting. Your tax problems don't care who you are, but we do. Kelly Maxwell has been pounding that back door, but 
she's been placing it right at the knees. It looks like Allen, she's been having trouble being able to keep her hands inside that ball. She's been falling off a few, but makes it difficult. There's a pop-up on the 1-2 swing to shallow left field. Pickering comes racing in to make the catch, and there's one away. Ochoa reaches on the leadoff walk, and the first out of the game is a pop-out to left for Angelina Allen. Let's set the Sooner defense for you here quickly. Alyssa Brito at third. T.R.A. Jennings at short. Selena Torres getting the start at second with Sid Sanders at first. Riley Boone gets the start in right. Pickering over in left. The center is Jada Coleman and a battery of Kelly Maxwell, who rocks and fires and throws it right into the mitt. Kinsey Hansen, the catcher, for a swing and a miss. Strike one. And that pitch is the one that you want to see. That back door, I just talked about it with the lefty Allen, but even against the rider, the righty minor, that back door just drops back over the plate. There's a pitch that Hansen had to go up and get ball one to minor. Minor, by the way, 291 average. You mentioned injuries. The first four hitters, five of the first six in the Iowa State lineup, have played all now 20 games and started all 20 games. As the 1-1 pitch is headed home, fouled back, one ball and two strikes. I mean, to add to that, you had the leadoff, 10 RBIs. Batter number two, 26. Batter number three, 17. Batter number four, 12. Batter number five, eight. Batter number six, eight. That top half of the lineup is really, really dominant, especially Allen, who just got out on that fly ball. Here's the one ball, two strike pitch. Swing and a miss. Swing and a miss on the rise, two away. And that'll bring Alicia Ranches to the plate. The shortstop, number five, Alicia Ranches. Kelly Maxwell settling in after that first walk. You love to see that. You love to see her readjust after going four balls in a row, shaking it off and saying, all right, let's come back, let's pound the zone. Right-handed hitting Alicia Ranches, the senior. Batting 286 this year. First pitch to the right handed hitting ranches has fouled back for strike one. Just underway, scoreless at Love's Field. That's Nicole Mendez. I'm Chris Plank. This next pitch will be the 16th pitch of the first inning for Kelly Maxwell. Lead off walk to Ochoa. Maxwell trying to make sure she stays right there at first base. Here comes the 0 1. A little low and in. Two balls, pardon me, one ball and a strike. We got a long day together, but I'm excited about it. I, I'm I can't wait. Are you staying in town tonight? I am. Game? I am. Your girl G? My girl G. 1-1, one, one, fouled off to the right side. I won't lie, though. I took, I have my little dog bingo with me this weekend. We traveled all the way. San Marcos mm-hmm. got here. Took him for a little walk before I brought him into the apartment. Did he already make a mess? He made a mess. Does she I know yet? just about booted him out the door. One, two is outside. Does she <laughs> know yet? Or are we letting her know right she, now? She knew. Okay. She knew. She shot me a text and said, so, dot, dot, dot. <laughs> <laughs> G. Warriors is back with the team this year as a graduate assistant along with Lauren Foster. Fosty. Name still not catching on. <laughs> Here's the 2-2. Two, two. Oh, beautiful pitch on the inside corner. Cold strike three, inning over. Well done. Kelly Maxwell worked around the leadoff walk to get the strikeout. Hello, I'm Nicole Mendez. I'm Chris Mike. Every I want to know. I want to know everything that's going on. Just so you know. Uh, scoreless game is Riley Boone strides to the play. Aubin Fibbins got her back in the franchise studios. We owe you a weather report. We'll bring it to you after the first pitch of the game to Riley Boone, or at least for the Sooners, it's in for a strike. It is absolutely gorgeous out right now, but chilly in the shade, 53 degrees. Only going to make it to a high of about 55, which I'm sure makes Nicole Mendes ecstatic that I have the windows open. <laughs> The 0-1 pitch is in for a strike, and quickly Boone is behind. No balls and two strikes to Lauren Sherman getting the start for the Cyclones. Here's the 0-2. A little soft slap foul to stay alive. The wind is going to be what's interesting to watch. It's blowing out of the south 
at 13 miles an hour, but it's a different wind than any game we've had here at Love's Field so far. So it's nice in the sun. It's chilly in the shade. The 0-2 popped down the left field line, slicing away from and out of play. Another fan making a good play in the stands. Angela Allen couldn't get there. So if you're coming to tonight's game, which is technically Friday's game, don't get confused, <laughs> I would highly suggest a jacket, definitely a hoodie. It's going to get a little chilly tonight. Yeah, if you're in the outfield, maybe. It's going to be nice out there. Maybe no just the jacket. That one. Good pitch, tight. missed outside ball one. Tight on that outside corner. <laughs> Oof. Maybe too tight for Riley Boone, who's hitting on the season 449. Weather brought to you by the Trails. Here's the one-two pitch. Boone takes it outside two and two. The Trails Golf Club in Norman, where you'll experience everything you love about golf and more. The good news is that wind doesn't seem to be too problematic here early on. If even existent here early on. <laughs> Here's the two-two pitch to Boone. She's fought her way back. Chops this one to short. Tough bounce. Played beautifully to throw to first in time and gets it. Well done on the high hop by Ranches at shortstop. Jada Coleman going with Hunger Games. I was just thinking about that. I was like, okay. I, uh, Dramatic, slow, pause for effect is what I'm thinking. The Plank girls are over the moon excited right now about that. Here's are they Jada. big Hunger Girl? Hunger Girls? 390. They're, they're, very, very, they're very hungry <laughs> is the first pitch misses up and away. I think we but, can all relate to that. But, no, I, my my 15-year-old has been all in. I guess it's with the new one coming out. She went back and read all the old ones. Watch. You want me to spoil it for you? No. Here's the one ball, no strike pitch. It's plank. Misses inside of Coleman. I could I could tell you what happened and not know I'm spoiling it and spoil it. So I'll just <laughs> stop there. We'll the, just stop there and let Jada Coleman get now a walk-up I, song. I have noticed as Coleman strides in with her 393 average, 15 runs batted in and five extra base hits as the 2-0 pitch is headed home and it's in for a strike. That maybe the term salty could be used to describe some of the response to the Sooners having walk-up songs this year and it not... <laughs> Being something that we've seen in years past, I think Aaron Miller would agree they were not happy about that in 16. <laughs> she threw Katie Self under the bus in the broadcast. <laughs> Two one is a little bit out. Three and one. That outside corner is tight. We saw Riley Boone take an 0-2 pitch that was entirely way too close for my comfort. Jada I Coleman, do. I mean, she's up in the count right now, but again, that pitch is. It's barely missing. Here's the 3 1. Strike two. Jada thought it was ball four. I mean, it was a strike. It, if that wouldn't have been a strike, if I was Jamie Pinkerton, I might have got tossed from this game. <laughs> early on, <laughs> early but on. All right. Why not? Set the tone for uh, Kaylee Young behind home plate, our umpire today. Brad Newton at first, Naomi Ertle at third. There's a foul ball off the bat of Coleman. But. Real quick, full circle on the walk-up songs. There's certain benchmarks that you have to hit to have that reward. And from the reporting that I've been able to garner, they hit all those benchmarks. I don't believe it. <laughs> I don't believe it. In the 30 years. The 3-2 to Coleman is lifted pretty deep to left center field and it falls for a hit. Jada's on her way to second with a stand-up double on a ball that looked like Allen. Had a few issues in left field reading it, Nicole. We'll take it. It's a one-out double for Jada Coleman. I mean, you talked about it, kind of foreshadowing it at the beginning of the game. The wind today is blowing in. It's blowing from the north. It's blowing from center field down into home plate. That ball was crushed. I thought that one was going over. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden it just dies. And then you have Allen out and left going deep into the gap. Looks like she has a beat on it. And then on, not only it does it die, it starts drifting back <laughs> towards left field. Here's the first pitch to the three-hole hitter, Brito. It's in for a strike. Alyssa across the board on all the numbers. Impressive. 439 on the season. 20 runs batted in. Second on the team. Leads the team so far in 2024 with seven home runs. 
The 0-1 misses low and away, 1-1. One and one. And she has been, in a word, incredible with runners in scoring position this season. Coleman stands at second, one out, scoreless game, bottom of the first inning. Brito waits, the pitch. Lifted pretty deep to left field. It's got a chance, but it's caught at the warning track. Coleman tags. She's going to try to take third, and they got her. Jada tried to take an extra bag. little pat on the back from Patty Gasso. Okay, let's not break without talking about this. This is a different win. This is a different issue. That's a home run here on Wednesday night. I think that's back-to-back home runs. That one by Brito, absolutely. That was going to the second deck out left field, left field. But that wind is blown. Here we go to the second inning. Oklahoma and Iowa State are scoreless. Winning things off is, well, I guess I need to flip over my scorebook, Tiana Poole. We are joined in the booth by Noble McIntyre, who threw a strike. As a, I'm a one-pitch wonder. <laughs> I, I don't think I could throw another strike. I'm, I think I was pretty lucky that time. <laughs> One ball and no strikes to pool. The right-hander fouls this one straight back. Uh, appreciate your support. Oh, I mean, no problem. E- everything you do, not just for softball, but for Oklahoma athletics. You uh, have jumped on board one of the great sponsorships we have, the Noble McIntyre Review. That's fantastic always. That's I think, the best. I think we've got that across football, basketball, <laughs> baseball, and softball now. We needed it. I mean, let me tell you something. We realized how badly we needed it last week as the 1-1 is in for a strike. One ball, two strikes. Because I don't know if you were able to come last Saturday and Sunday. We spent more time in reviews than I think we've ever spent. So really? You got the money's worth there last Yeah, week. the funny thing about the football games, we started with football. Uh-huh. Uh, the only person that likes those reviews is me. <laughs> the game stops. Everybody waits for 10 minutes while it's up on the scoreboard, and I get Boom. to see my name up the whole time. Line drive by Poole, caught by Tiare Jennings. There's one away here is the Spellhawk. What do you think of this place? Was this your first time to it, see it? It is. It is. It's unbelievable, especially for those of you who haven't been here but have been to the other facility. This is amazing. Um, it's an unbelievable facility. I don't think I could hit it out of the infield, though. I'd give you a good chance. You think so? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd give you a good chance. I will say it is kind of amazing as Spellhog, the first baseman, digs in, the senior. Feels like she's been at school forever. Uh, her sister, Ellie, I don't think Ellie's here anymore. I didn't see her in any of my notes that I had as the first pitch misses low for a ball. Um, I stopped because the team's still preparing over at Marita Hines, and I'm pointing so everyone on the radio knows where I'm pointing at. But... Um, I just stopped for a moment in the infield at Marina Hines as the 1-0 pitch is ripped. Foul. Fair. Down the third baseline into the corner. That'll hit so hard off the wall that it ricocheted a Pickering who threw to second to hold her to a single. Now the umpires are going to get to you. Uh-oh. We, a McIntyre law review. We might get a McIntyre review right I, here. I timed this perfectly. You did. There we go. It's, oh, Jamie Pinkerton's going to lose his mind right here. They call time. Are they, it looked like for a moment they were going to go and look it over, and now they're just going to say foul ball. I, I could have I, I called it from here, from it right back here. foul from here. Jamie can challenge this now if he wants to. And Alyssa Brito, Alyssa Brito is helping Jamie out. Uh, the third base coach was ar- – uh, Jamie Pinkerton, the Iowa State head coach, was arguing, and Brito pointed down to the area where the ball had hit in the dirt. The 1-1 is in for strike two. Almost had a McIntyre review. Wait around a little bit. We'll get one. You know, I um, we got to find. I got to talk about your hometown at some point, right? Oh, I, I always mention Burns Flat. Every time <laughs> I give an interview, I mention Burns Flat. I heard you talking about it with Toby the other day. Here's the one-two pitch. Is Spellhog the right-handed hitting first baseman waits? Swing and a miss. Good job by Hanson on the ball in the dirt quickly. There's two away. Hey, Noble, tell us about some of the great things you have coming up, too, because you guys are always about giving back and helping people out. We do. You know, you know we have the big turkey program every year. Right right before Thanksgiving, we give away three, 4,000 turkeys and feed about 10,000 people. We've done that for 11, 12, 13 years now. It's a big, big deal, and I appreciate uh, OU and how much they support that. I, they always bring the Sooner Schooner out. They always bring the Roughnecks. A lot of the coaches show up, and uh, it, I really appreciate that. We appreciate you. Camille Marin. With two away here in a rather quick-moving second, first pitch, swing and a miss, strike one. Team looks pretty good, too, don't they? Oh, they do. You know, Kinsey, I walked up, um, and I told her, make me look good, because <laughs> I do the NIL deal with OU to make a case where I, play, right. where I play a judge. And I'll tell you right after this pitch. Oh, I love it. 
Look at you. You've got an analyst mindset on this. Here's the 0-1, swing and a miss. So I, do, stop. so I do an NIL deal where we bring in athletes and we argue a different position. And, and Kinsey uh, came in and argued on which Disney princess was better, Milan or I forgot who the other one was. Uh, but I ruled for her, and so it's a lot of fun. So I knew her before. Oh, ah, okay. I think she lost that to Nicole May. May. That's right, I'm Nicole May. Swing and a miss. Very quick, top half of the second. Uh, anything else you want us to make sure that we mention? No, no we you know, it's, it's, uh, I just love being a part of the OU program. To the bottom of the second, we go scoreless in Norman, Oklahoma, and Iowa State. Brought to you by Courtyard Marriott. Just minutes from the OU campus. Courtyard by Marriott Norman is competitively priced with travelers in mind. Learn more about our great amenities and book your stay at marriott.com slash OKCNO. First pitch is up and in for a ball to Tiara Jennings along with Nicole Mendez. I'm Chris Plank. Thanks for joining us on the Sooner Radio Network. Oklahoma leadoff, ground out by Boone, double by Coleman, and she was doubled off on a fly ball that she tried to take an extra base. 1-0 1-0 is in for a strike, 1-1. One one. Jennings, Nicole, you you said it. She's having one of those types of seasons. 431 already. Leads the team in home runs. Second on the team in home runs with six. Currently leads the team with 22 runs batted in. 1-1 one, one pitch misses up and away. 2-1. I mean, she's doing what she's always done. She's been so consistent year after year after year she's just being tra jennings she's being herself tra jennings doing tra jennings things the two one lifted pretty deep to right field but that wind is a beast and it's not much of one caught in right field after dancing around for a bit by pool there's one away and i think that's an adjustment oklahoma's gonna have to make yes you have the power you clearly saw at least one should have gone out of the park if not two but the wind isn't letting it happen today so you better have an exit velo of 85 or (laughs) make those line drives make them hard ground balls make the defense have to work because that's the only way you're going to get those runners on bases Here's the first pitch to Kinsey Hansen. It's a little bit out. Ball one. Hansen, 385 on the season. Starting to see the numbers tick up. Hansen has, in her last two seasons, as the 1-0 is ripped foul, somewhat of a slow starter. Remember, after she burst onto the scene in 2020, had an Obvious COVID shortened season. 2021 was another good year. And they got injured in 22 and struggled a bit after her incredible first season and a half. Bouncer down the third baseline is found. But last season missed the first handful of games, including the Baylor game. With what was it, appendicitis? She had an appendectomy, if I remember correctly. She did. It, she found out the day before the team was supposed to leave. Wow. It's not optimum timing, Mr. Appendix. <laughs> Our Mrs. Appendix, Miss in this case. Here's the one two. Hanson reaches, rips it foul down the first baseline. Coach Steele, Fall A Palima Steele, manages the first base coach's box. Didn't even move on that line drive. Not even a flinch. Broke out the black puffy coat today as she is in the sun for all the right reasons. Coach Gasso usually getting to hang out in that shade is looking for sunlight. You can see her just tiptoeing her the way back there, yeah. The one two to Hansen. Boy, another really good pitch that just misses outside. Yeah, these corners are tight today. As a pitcher, it's not always what you want to hear, but With the wind blowing in, that does give you a little bit of leeway. Okay, if I have to come back Mm. over. One, two, hard hit ball to short. Bounces off of the glove of Ranches. Picks it up. Can't make a play. Await the ruling, but Hanson is aboard on an absolute shot. That one hop to shortstop Ranches and ate her up. I talked about it. If you can't get it out with that exit velo of 85 plus, you got to hit it down on the ground and you got to make those defenses work. That's what Kinsey Hansen did. That was an absolute 
shot at Ranches. She barely had any time to make movement to field that ball before it was on her. Here's the freshman, Cassidy Pickering. First pitch. A little low, ball one. Everything numbers-wise for Pickering has been fantastic. And this is really interesting. This left side of the infield, they almost look like third base. You have Miner just creeping up towards Pickering. 1-0 is low. They are, they are giving Pickering two areas. They're saying, we dare you to hit it down the third baseline, and we dare you to hit it between the five-six hole. I mean, they are at least more towards the second baseline. Not side. even five-six hole. Yeah. Ranches is pinched up the middle. Shortstop's yeah. wide open. 2-0 pitch is high. Hey, well, I guess that's she's it. She's got to watch out for Kenzie Hansen because right. this year, Kenzie Hansen, she has wheels. Speed. Yeah. Even though I still don't think Coach is very happy about her getting picked <laughs> off this past weekend. Yeah. Two for two on Wednesday night. Scored two runs, drove in three to Pickering there. She takes a 3-0 strike. Had a solid opening weekend here at Love's Field. Had two home runs. The joy she has playing the game is really cool. The 3-1 is in for a strike. I don't think I've heard her say two words very quiet all season long. I've tried. <laughs> I want to be friends with Cassidy Pickering, but she's very quiet. Let's but corner her after the all, game. All about business, man. She is She's going to be a fan favorite for years to come. Here's the 3-2. Bounces it softly back to the circle. The only place to first. And a good job staying on the bag for the second out of the inning by the first baseman, Spellhawk. The Sooners in danger of stranding a runner in scoring position here for the second straight inning. This is our Love's Travel Stops player to watch. Ella Parker, Love's Travel Stops, the heart of the highway. What do you want to see from Ella Parker today? Uh, score a run. <laughs> <laughs> right here, she has the opportunity. Like you said, Iowa State, they have done a good job since Kenzie Hansen's absolute blast over to shortstop, just minimizing damage. Get that run in. First I pitch, a little bit out, ball one. In that seven spot that she's in, she's going to have a lot of runners on base for her throughout this game. So making the most of those opportunities behind Alyssa Brito, behind T.R. Jennings. 1-0 is, oof, that's in for a strike, one and one. Behind Pickering, Hanson, right? Well, behind those two, Parker, she has the most RBIs. Oh, I, I'm a dummy. I thought you were talking about the batting lineup. <laughs> I mean, she is behind them in the batting <laughs> lineup as well. Here's the 1-1. One, one. That's in the dirt. Hanson it's back to the back. Good job by Marin to block it. That's my fault. I was looking down at the numbers, and they just kind of got blurred. And I was like, where did I go? <laughs> That's every broadcast for me, Mindy. Here's the 2-1 pitch. Boy, that pitch clock is getting low. It's at 5 Rod home, and Parker takes it up high upstairs, ball three. Three and one. I will say of all the pitchers that we've watched so far this season, Lauren Schulman, she'll work that pitch clock a little bit longer than just about everyone. I mean, it's at nine, and she hasn't at even towed point, the rubber yet. This is the thing, though, where umpires and teams and coaches are going to adjust. She throws that one down Ooh. the middle for a strike. And for a strike. You mean where the pitcher hasn't even towed the rubber yet, but the batter's supposed to be in the batter's box, well, right? No? It's it's a 20-count pitch clock, yep. but the pitcher has until 10 seconds to step on the mound. And she's stepping on now. It's 7 seconds. Mm. So that should be a ball. 3-2 is, well, hey, it worked out in the end. Ball 4. But to that point, it's a new rule. Gets a walk, but... I think you're going to see, especially as postseason comes around, you get later on into conference, that's the worst time as a pitcher to have to be worrying about that. So just focusing in and locking in on that timing, yeah, the, and that's going to be tough. But you you have 10 seconds to step on the rubber as a pitcher. Then from that moment of yeah. you stepping on the rubber, you have 10 more seconds to do your pitch. And 10, you've got to be in the batter's box at the 10-second point. Ready too. to go. You yeah. can't be calling time. They won't give it to you. The umpires won't give it to you as a batter within that, after that 10 seconds. And, and, and we've seen, I'm glad you brought that up, we've seen a very, we've talked about it a lot on the broadcast, a varying degree 
of different grace periods and non from umpires. So we'll see what that looks like today in the opening of Big 12 play. We're scoreless, two on, two out. Here's the first pitch to Sydney Sanders. She wanted to, took it for strike one. Sydney Sanders is been hitting the ball hard all season, but it's also been to her detriment, one of the leaders in strikeouts for the Sooners. Here's the 0-1, and she skies this one. Deep to right field, ranging back and making the catch. Short of the warning track is pull, and that'll do it for the Sooners. They strand two more. We head to the third. Here we go to the third inning. Third inning shout-outs coming up. Nicole Mendez, I'm Chris Plank. You're listening to Sooner Softball on the Sooner Sports Network. And the third scoreless shout-outs brought to you by Century Roofing. Century Roofing is on guard for Oklahoma. McKenna Andrews will lead things off. I am not flipping my scorebook over enough today. What's going on here? First pitch to Andrews is in for a strike. Sooners have a hit. Iowa State's committed an error. That's where we are right now. You guys are tuned in today. Let's go. Here's the 0-1 pitch to the right-handed hitting second baseman. That's in for a strike. One. 67 batting average this year for Andrews. But efficient. Four hits, four runs, four runs batted in. Not bad. That's all you can ask for. Being efficient with your at-bats. Santa Kelly and Anita Ford were first in today. Section 8. 291 days away from Christmas. Here's the 0-2 pitch. Christmas clock is starting. Let's go. The 0-2 up high. <laughs> the, I, so on Sunday, I've got a new pregame tradition. When I get set up in time, which so rarely happens, is I try to get as many laps around the stadium as I can just to take it all in and to get my steps, right? I always see Santa Kelly and Anita Ford. 1-2, swing and a miss. Kelly Maxwell dealing. Third straight strikeout. Fifth of the game, strikeouts brought to you by Tinker Federal Credit Union, Oklahoma's largest credit union. Sharice is tuned in in Austin. Stephanie is in Antlers while trying to keep up with both basketball games. Yeah, I'm. That's a lot to juggle as a sports fan, as an OU sports fan. I might need your help on that. Here's (laughs) Olivia Wardlow. First pitch to the lefty. Slapper, slap back. Yeah, forget that. I need 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 help on the scores. This is third inning update to Chris Plank on other sports. <laughs> <It's> greedily <laughs> using the shout-outs to my own advantage, right? <laughs> Melanie and Brent in Seattle today. Mickey and Nick checking in while listening in Sugarland. They're flying back to Sugarland. The 0-1 is skipped in the dirt. One ball, one strike. All settled in. Larry and the St. Pete soonered in. Joe Fortnier. Pensacola Joe. You know what the best thing that happened to me today outside of you calling this game with me, Nicole? <laughs> Suck up. <laughs> Caitlin Fournier came in. We got to hang out before first pitch. It was great. Oh. I gave her some song recommendations. We'll okay. see, see if she uses it. 1-1, one, one, swing and a miss. That back door is dirty. So stealthy. Stealthy. It is. I'm adding that one. Stealthy. I mean, as a lefty, you know that it's going to bend back and it's not going to hit you, but you still you can't help it. Swing and a miss. Kelly Maxwell is dealing. I mean, she is absolutely filthy here early on. Fourth straight strikeout, sixth of the game. There's two away in a scoreless game as we head back to the top of the lineup. Malaysia Ochoa. Wow. Save that first four-pitch walk. Mm. First batter of the game. After that, Kelly Maxwell has been so good. First pitch, swing and a miss. And I I wonder if some of that has to be her going, "Uh uh-uh, we're not doing this again. We're not going to tiptoe around that line. Just go at him. I I don't even care. Just go at him. She looks good. Here's the 0-1 in the dirt. Uh oh, I got a bad update. Not oh, that it's no. from, not a, that it's from someone I don't want to hear from. It's from Larissa Holquin, one of our favorites. <laughs> 
Here's the 1-1 pitch from Kelly Maxwell. Headed home. Up high. Women are up over TCU with four minutes left in the third, 40-37. to Oh. The men are down 19. With oh. To go in the game. Mm. So it just means that Sooners would be, what, the nine in the Big 12 tournament, nine or ten. Could have been as high as the seven. If they can win today, the 2-1 pitch is in for a strike, two and two. Oh, wh- what? Ball that three pitch. low. Again, tied on those corners. I don't even know if that one even got to the corner. That was a curveball that went coast to coast, ended middle away. Maybe it was low. That's I, the only. That's the only thing I could think why that wasn't called. Ochoa, who walked in her first to plate appearances, grounds this one right to Sid Sanders, who takes it to the bag and ends the inning. Scoreless game as Alina Torres strides to the plate. Nine, one, and two hitters for the Sooners in a scoreless game. Third inning shoutouts brought to you by Century Roofing on guard for Oklahoma. Torres hitting 343 on the season, takes the first pitch for strike one. I, I will say, this is what walk up songs are meant to do. <laughs> Lena Torres has Gasolina as her walk-up song, and the whole dugout's dancing along. That is what we told Coach Gasso the past oh, 29 years. Is wow. line to first off the glove of Spellhawk, trickles away from her, and Torres beats her to the bat. That'll be a single to lead things off here in the third. It's just a matter of time. Alina Torres is hitting the ball well. Uh, Traylon DeKerr had checked in, and as we're going to have a pinch runner here, Avery Hodge is going to pinch run. Traylon, I appreciate you talking about, number one, she says, I can't hear the walk-up music. All I hear is the PA and the walk-up. I mean, I don't know if it's just like. I don't know how you guys don't. I don't know. I mean, it's like the loudest thing in the world <laughs> booming into our booth right now. That is rule to hit second of the game for the I Sooners. I think they installed like a secret yeah. speaker it's like there's right this, above us. We're going to have a quick trip to the circle, so Iowa State's going to. Delay uh, my complaining about the, the ambient noise, but <laughs> but um, I if I appreciate that Trey Linda thinks I would be hip enough to tell you what song. That's why I need you here for every walk up. This one's on TikTok, Chris Plank. <laughs> I could I think I could figure that one out. All right, so we'll have meetings at the circle while we do. Thanks to Kayla Hargis who has us turned in from tuned in from here for Texas. Joel is in Rogersville. Bobby is in the land of Lincoln, which is Illinois. You do not pronounce the S. Jessica Bames got multi screens <laughs> today, but has tuned in to us. Robert's li- listening in Hoffman, Oklahoma. Thanks, Robert. Gunny's in the house, as is the Kitches tuned in and more. Jana and JC Foster in from I 44 on the way to Norman for the late game. You think that traffic's still backed up? Should we warn everyone about I 35 or? If you're coming in from the south on I-35, it was a bit of a mess. Today. Yeah, I would always plug it in waves just to see the shortest shortest time. Save me 30 minutes on my drive up here this morning. All right, so here is Riley Boone. Look at you supporting waves over Apple Maps. Boone swings and misses at the first pitch up high. Grounded out to shorter last time up. Avery Hodge is indeed pinch running here. I find ways is a little bit too overly optimistic on the amount of time I'm going to spend. <laughs> it tells me what I want to hear. The 0-1 pitch is high, one ball and one strike. And I'll tell you this much, Avery Hodge has all the attention right now of Marin behind the plate. She Big is, lead. She is keeping an eye on her. I mean, way out there. The first one, it was a bunt and miss, so I can understand the big lead. But on that one, that was a take all the way eight or nine steps. Bunt foul. Hodge does not have a stolen base this season. How is that possible? Sooners are 23 of 35. I'm so, whoa, that would be terrible. 23 of 25 <laughs> on stolen base opportunities. And I want to com- officially confess to being a jinx on something after this one-two pitch. Uh-oh. Yeah. Here it comes to Boone. Swings and grounds it towards short. Cut off, though, first by Schulman, the pitcher, who makes a nice play. No play at second, though. Hodge advances. Boone is out on the nice play by Sherman. It looked for certain like that was going to be Ranches trying to charge it. 
but Sherman cut it off with a backhand. That one was up in the face mask of Riley Moon. That was pretty high up there, but looks like Avery Hodge was going, so maybe two strike hit and run play in effect. Here's Jada. Doubled her last time up, but was thrown out, tagging and advancing to third. First pitch to Jada. Good spot right on that outside corner, strike one. Scoreless game. We're in the bottom of the third inning. Get some more of your check-ins here in a bit. Brito waits on deck. If anyone can get a boy aboard, Tiare Jennings. No balls and a strike to Jada. 404 average. Show to bunt, pulls it back, takes a ball. Yeah, that one yeah, ball out. outside. Yeah. Played umpire didn't. Kaylee Young initially make the call. Or at least that we could see. Here's the 1 1 pitch with a runner at second and one out. Headed home. Coleman takes it outside. Ball two. Coleman on these, she looks like she is leaning pretty heavy on that outside half. I think she's looking for something that'll be elevated, that'll come across. Got to look official. We're getting our picture taken. (laughs) Two balls and a strike. (laughs) Here's the pitch to Coleman. Way outside, ball three. We, uh, I'm trying to do a better job of getting scores, but I'm telling you what, it. I feel like games are moving so quickly now. By the time we start digging into the scoreboard, you got <laughs> you got Schulman ready to throw. Oh, we're going to get a violation here. There's that's she called for time. No, hold on here. That should be ball four. Yeah. Now, like I said, remember, she can claim some equipment malfunctions or anything of that nature, and an umpire can have some grace, which it looks like Kaylee Young's having here because the pitch clock expired. Here's the 3-1. Well, there's karma. Doesn't matter. Ball four. What do the kids say? Ball don't lie. (laughs) Well, to that point of being able to call the equipment not functioning, Mm -hmm. Iowa State, they don't have the bracelets. They're going off the call. Oh, they are going off the call. Okay. There is no, I mean, maybe she called it right at one second. But but that late, you're not supposed to be granted it, right? No. Like I said, there'll be a lot of grace given, and then whenever people start coming down hard on it, it'll be the (laughs) postseason. First pitch to Brito skips up. Great job behind the plate by Marin to save it. Wow. That was one heck of a play by Marin to keep that from allowing Hodge and Coleman to advance. I mean, she had to track that as Alyssa Brito was jumping over that ball. The 0-1 is ripped down the right field line. Fair. Patty Gasso waving home Avery Hodge. The throw was cut off. Hodge will score. They'll throw and Coleman avoided a tag at third. She's caught in the run down. Now she'll be tagged out. Or will she? Yeah, now they're saying she's out. She ended up getting back to the bag, but they say she jumped out of the baseline. And Patty Gasso is having a rather animated conversation with our third base umpire. They say that's Naomi Ertl at third. Naomi Ertl is our first base umpire. And that that wasn't her call, I believe. And that's where Patty Gasso is A, arguing, and then B, asking for the potential of obstruction. Yeah. I mean, at the end of that play, there were no outfielders left. <laughs> there, Everybody was either at second or by third. So Ertl is going over to explain to Coach Gasso. You know, actually, I think Naomi Ertl is behind home plate. I don't think they gave us the umpires in the right spot. I'm pretty sure that's Naomi Ertl behind home plate. You think it's young? I think it's young. Yeah, that's at first base? Yeah. I think you're right. So this conversation is ongoing. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, Naomi's behind home plate. And also, during that confusion, Young, she gestured off to the side with her hands towards the outfield with her hands, but she didn't give the out motion. So I can see where Jada Coleman, as a runner, until you see the out, keep going, keep trying to run. Jada's still standing at second base. She's having a conversation with Brad Newton. Now Coleman will head back to the dugout. 
no review. Fans don't like it. Holman's cut down on the base path, base paths for the second time, but the cutting off of the throw allowed Avery Hodge to score. RBI for Alyssa Brito, and it's one nothing Sooners. Lost in all that madness, Oklahoma takes the lead. <laughs> Here's the first pitch to TRA. It's up and away. I mean, talk about games going fast. I feel like there's been so much madness that has been going on within games. And to that point, that ball shouldn't have been cut off. Mm -hmm. That would have been a very, very close play at home plate. The 1-0 skips in. Brito off to second. Started, stop. Now she goes and slides in safe. Wow, pitch. That's a nice job by TRA Jennings. As a batter in the box, you don't have to move if you're in the box. Once you step out of the box, you have to move out of the way. But Jennings, she stayed in her place, kind of blocked the throwing lane for Marin. So whenever Brito was skipping on over there, she didn't have a throwing lane. This ball's hammered deep to right field, but the wind again knocks it down at the warning track. Poole makes the catch, and the inning is over. That's two balls off the bat of T.R.A. Jennings. Angelina Allen will lead things off for Iowa State here in the fourth. The Sooners up one nothing. Avery Hodge stays in at second. First pitch swing and a miss from Kelly Maxwell. Strike one. And Allen, last at bat, looked really uncomfortable with that inside pitch, that back door from Kelly. She just did it again, and you could see that same swing. She doesn't know what to do with that pitch, and, and I'm Kelly. I'm staying there the whole time. The one pitch is up and away, ball one. I saw that Shauna Coolbeth checked in they are headed to the big house to watch state championship basketball tonight here's the one one pitch from kelly maxwell grounded to the right side hodge on the big hop throws to first one away well you know i mentioned it number one because my washington lady warriors are on their way to play ida bell tonight for the state title number one uh -oh. no, number two last night brent venable's daughter played for the team that they beat at UConn, we, we, the, the game was played at UConn. It was one of the coolest environments I've been, ever been a really? part of, Nicole. It was loud, and BB's daughter is a baller. Uh, Chad Threlkel's team came up short against the Mighty Warriors, but it was a fun night. Here's the first pitch to Miner, is low and away. Yeah, we, um, my wife showed a side that I never knew existed. <laughs> it's almost, uh, she was yelling and screaming, and <laughs> TK, she was telling you to get off the court. I'm like, who is this woman? <laughs> Minor on the day is 0 for 1 with a strikeout. And a hard hit ball foul. You always think you're not going to be that person until you're that person. I mean, I'm not even kidding. I was so proud. <laughs> I was taking videos. I was like, I don't know who you are. You were taking videos? Yeah. Did you show I mean, her afterwards? People had to think I was crazy. Oh, she knew. She didn't need to be shown. <laughs> but that was fun. Man, mm. we, it's, they're renovating the big house, so I think this is our last year. We get to watch state ball there. The 1-1 one -one is... Bounce towards the circle. Look at Kelly Maxwell. So smooth on the big hop. Turns, throws, and gets her two away. Anyway, Sean and Coach K, y'all be safe. Traversing down to the big house. Ida Bell versus Washington. It's all anyone is talking about here right now at Love's Field. Just so you know. <laughs> um, I believe one of the Iowa State softball commits is on the Warrior basketball team. Really? Two away for Alicia Ranches. Swinging a foul at the plate. Ranches striked out. Uh, struck out. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> it's time to go to the pen. We're going to bring in our backup play-by-play -play relief, guy. Relief. <laughs> she striked out her last time up. Oh, my gosh. Struck out her last time up. Striked out, struck out. The result <laughs> was the same. <laughs> One of six strikeouts that Maxwell has had on the game so far. One zip sooner is lead it when the top of the fourth. Here's the 0-1 pitch. Shows bunt, pushes it down the first baseline foul. But re real quick, just one final thought. is CCS that they were playing, and my wife is not a big sports fan in general. Whenever we were driving home, she goes, Coach Venable's daughter, she's a baller. <laughs> <laughs> it was a fun night. Kudos to UConn for hosting. What great facilities they have. All right, 2 away, 0-2 count here. One zip Sooners. Maxwell is ready. Rocks and fires. I mean, oh, ho, 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 ho. it looked like strike three because Ranches had swung, but she checked her swing 
And as she did, Hanson had tossed the ball up, thinking strike three. So it's just like a little soft underhand toss back to the circle. Here's the one-two. And it fooled me, too, as that pitch misses low, two and two. I thought she had gone. You can see Ken- Kenzie Hanson right away go stop. Turned around to the I, umpire. I'm sorry. I thought yeah. she swung. <laughs> <laughs> Making sure they're still friends. Here's the 2-2 pitch. Headed home. Popped up. Right field. Boone racing back. Racing back. And it hits off the base of the wall. Rounding first and heading towards second is Ranches with the first hit of the game. It's a two-out double that on maybe any given day, like three balls we've seen off a of Sooner's bat, might be out of here. And that ball just hit off the base of the wall. Okay, theory on that. At Marita Hines, maybe that's a ball that Riley Boone goes a little bit further for, but with how we've seen balls bounce off the outfield wall here, first pitch to Tiana Poole is in for the strike. I mean... I was asking Andrea Gasso, who, if she's here today, is an absolute hero because we're due another Gasso grandbaby any oh day Oh, my now. God, any day. She said she was surprised with how the ball just ricochets off the wall as hard as it does. You know, one is hit hard foul down the right side. Well, back at Marita Hines, it, it would bounce off pretty hard okay. already, but here it's like it must be the new pads. Well, that's mm. the only thing I can think of, but it's pretty firm. You're going shallow outfield ricochet. Not five feet, ten feet, but almost rolling back to the infield. Mm. One ball and two strikes. Maxwell. Swing and a foul at the plate. Just staying alive is pull. She lined out to short. Arguably before the last hit by Ranches, the hardest hit ball that Iowa State had had today. Final from Mitchell Park in game one of two. OU has beaten UCF four to three. So Skip's crew starts conference play with a win. Here it's one zip sooner as we're in the fourth. Runner at second for Iowa State. The pitch pop foul down the right field line and slicing up against the netting and out of play. Updates from other games if you're taping Irma for like 20 seconds. Sooners have seized control in Kansas City, up 62-47 in the fourth. Oh, you in trouble in Austin and men's hoops, down 83-69 late in the second half. 0-2 is a good 0-2 pitch that misses outside. Oh, you baseball will play a second game coming up here in a bit. And remember... Our two games will be two separate games, so they will clear the park and allow the fans with Friday tickets in afterwards. One, two is low, two balls and two strikes. I would say they're trying to give new life, trying to hang on to this inning. I'm ready in the fourth. It's just been going by so quick. 2-2 pitch, Maxwell with four on the pitch clock. It's a grounder that hits off her glove, knocks it down, picks it up, throws to first, inning over. Oh, that was scary. Off the bat, Maxwell looked like she was protecting herself. Back to work for Sherman. Stepping in is Kinsey Hansen. First pitch, the bottom of the fourth inning is in for a strike. One zip Sooners on an RBI by Alyssa Brito, which I guess we failed to mention for Brito was number 21 on the season. Here's a hard hit ball down the right field line. Foul and now slicing out of play. Heads up, bullpen. The Iowa State bullpen down to that right hand corner. Hanson on the day, one for one. I guess that would be a Captain Obvious thing, right? But <laughs> it's the one thing that we really don't have a good perspective of from our broadcast location who's working in either bullpen but went down and kind of investigated both of them. Oh, my gosh. Such a cool area. It's so spacious. O2 is outside, one and two. And I think what's cool is there is a walkway, or I guess it would be a wall that is a walkway, that connects the concourse to the outfield bleachers and outfield seating. And you can stand there and watch them warm up. It's pretty cool. Just think, 
That one low inside for a ball. Just think of that as World Series style, where you have that walkway, you're going to the outfield stadium seats, and you can see those pitchers warming up before they put the roof on mm. those bullpens out there. But it's out and left, it's out and right. Here's the 2 2 to Hanson. Up and in, nearly hit him. And I think that's so important. I mean, I remember being a little kid coming to softball games, and I was a pitcher growing up, and I would say, Where's the pitcher? Where's the bullpen? I, w- I want to go watch some warm up. Marina Hines, there would be kids hanging out all the time around the bullpen. 3 2 is a hard hit ball that is played off a hop and short brilliantly by Ranches, who throws to first to get Hanson. Oh my. I think it's safe to say Ranches was ready this time. That's the second hard hit just directly to her. Her feet just right on that grass. Wow. That was Grace Lyons-esque. I mean, she caught that on a hop. Going back and, again, hit so hard. Not a Mm. ton of time to react. Here's Pickering. First pitch, Cassidy takes high. Grounded out back to Sherman. And her only plate appearance so far in the second. Sooners up 1-0. We're in the bottom of the fourth inning. 449 average for Pickering as she takes strike one on the outside corner. I think, oh, you were with me. We ha- we had a chance to talk about it a little bit, playing against your former travel ball teammates. You coached them last weekend in the ULL first game. We don't talk about the second game. Here's the 1-1. One, one. Foul back. Jerry Glasgow had some incredibly kind things to say about Sooner fans, Patty Gasso, and obviously this facility. And I just love his perspective on it because that's what it is. I mean, it is all about growing the game, mm-hmm. being able to get people to say, yeah, this is what the standard is. Mm-hmm. This is what it should be. One, two, pitch. Up high in the eyes. Pickering launches one back up the middle into center field. It's a base hit. Oh, she went up and got it, Nicole, and lasered it in the center field. Fourth hit of the game by a Sooner. Make that the fifth hit of the game for the Sooners. And, and I Zella think Parker. what I love most about that was it was an elevated pitch that Pickering took. It was like a low line drive. It would have been so easy to be able to go up on that ball, but with that win, Oklahoma has done a really good job of keeping that ball low hitting it hard, getting it through the infield. Parker walked her first at bat. First pitch. Runner's not going. It's in for a strike. And I I think we need to be clear, at least from our perspective and looking at the flags, uh, we we don't have the greatest perspective of the grandstand flags, which you can see in the shadows. Here's the 0-1. Ripped down the left field line. Foul. What am I saying? We don't have the greatest perspective. <laughs> we can't see them. I mean, they're on the, that's they're, they're not on the, the overhang greatest perspective. You're the right. Stands. <laughs> but we can kind of see through the, the shadows. <laughs> <laughs> My gosh. It does. It's, we're, we've seen stronger <laughs> wins is what I'm trying to say. <laughs> but it's making an impact here today. 0-2 to Parker's way up. I wanted to. Chris Plank, these shadows are, are making you nervous. I, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you never know the angle of something that you can't see. It's, gosh, here's the one ball, two strike pitch to Parker. Sherman misses outside. It's a final in Austin. OU men's basketball falls to Texas 94 to 80. Get an update after the game from Toby Rowland on what's next for hoops. Here's the 2-2 pitch to Parker. Way inside almost. Nope, it did hit him. And right now, this inning, if you're Oklahoma, you're looking to bust this wide open. A one-run lead is not enough. And you heard it in Coach's interview. She's talking about she wants to see the response. Yep. She wants to see that this weekend specifically as they start off conference, what do you look like? Can you string your bats together? Can you string hits together? 
Big spot here for Sid Sanders to do just what Nicole Mendez said. String a few hits together, and let's blow this game wide open. one nothing Sooners, bottom of the fourth, first and second, one out, first pitch in for a strike. Mentioned the tough loss for the men. How about Jenny Baranchek's team? Looks like they're going to roll on up 14 with 30 seconds to go. Pitch in the dirt. No balls and a strike. Pickering had a big lead off second. Hit the brakes. Made her way back to the back. One ball and one strike. The pitch to Sanders. Popped up. Right center field. This ball's got a little bit of carry to it at the wall. It's nearly caught, but the right fielder and center fielder collided, and they're going to say home run. They're going to say the ball got out of the yard. Wow. Jamie Pinkerton's going to challenge this. I, the right fielder pull and Ochoa had a beat on it. The ball kept carrying and carrying towards right center field. On a day when everything in that direction has been knocked down, Sanders found the secret sauce. And as both Ochoa and Poole went up to get it, they collided into each other. And according to, who is that? Naomi Ertle? No, not Naomi Ertle over at first. We we corrected that, right? Kaylee Young, who was out, she called it a home run. Now, they're going to go and review this. It's time for an official review. I think it was. I What I saw was Poole and Ochoa going back deep right center. Poole had it in her glove, and whenever Ochoa bumped into her, it bumped out of, Ocho- it bumped out of Ochoa's hand, or excuse me, Poole's glove, it over the fence. Oh, Chad's, Chad says he thinks it's coming back in. Okay. There you go. So they got the replay in TV. So it looks like, here, we got a replay now that we can look at. The two come together. The ball hits off. Does it go out or does it come back? That's I think the, it goes out yeah, and I it think bounces right. back in. Yeah. That's what I saw was it bounces off of the glove. If... This is a home run. That's the second home run this year that Sid Sanders has hit that basically it looked like an outfielder had made a catch and it goes over the wall. How lucky is Sid Sanders? It happened at McNeese. (laughs) I think it was McNeese. But we're waiting on this official review. We talked to our buddy Noble earlier. He threw a strike here. Noble McIntyre and McIntyre Law, the law firm you should turn to for all your personal injury needs. Here's the call. Yep, home run. Well, I, I'm i sorry, Sid Sanders. I was not familiar with your game. That was the worst call of a home run ever, but we'll take it. And just what Nicole <laughs> Mendes had ordered, the Sooners start to put some distance between themselves and the Cyclones, and we'll get our first pitching change. You, you said they needed it. And Sid Sanders provided it. Don't look now, but Sid Sanders is starting to get hot. For Sanders, my man Jim Gasso, Poppy had confirmed it all along. My phone is just too slow. And uh, our buddy Steven York said it bounced off a Sooner fan, then came back in. Good call. Why are we not catching that, Sooner fan? Let's go. Come on. Be better. <laughs> <laughs> Missed opportunity out there. No, absolutely. Um, with Nicole Mendez, I'm Chris Plank. New pitcher for Iowa State as they've gone to the pen for the first time today. He's the right-hander, Jane Ralston. Ralston out of Paso Robles, California. She'll take over here in a game that now at four zip after the three-run home run is empty the bases, an opportunity for the Sooners to start a rally again. Avery Hodge will hit in Alina Torres' spot. Ralston is one and three on the season. 
16 earned runs, has struck out 15, walked just nine, has thrown 18 innings. Left-handed hitting Hodge, one out after the three-run home run. First pitch misses low, ball one. Everything, by the way, looks to be okay between Ochoa and Poole. They just collided, and as soon as they collided with each other, that ball just popped right over the fence. 1-0 to Hodge is in for a strike. Avery Hodge on the season so far is hitting just 263, but nine runs scored, four runs about an inch. He's walked three times. And at her first career triple in Lake Charles, 1-1 pitch misses low, two balls and a strike. I thought it was going to get out of the yard, too. I'm not going to lie. I think that was <laughs> that was one where the right fielder actually brought it back. Here's the 2-1. Hard hit ball to short. Nice job staying down on it by Ranches. Throws to first to retire Hodge, and there's two away. Jane Ralston, by the way, last season, a 4.20 ERA. She made 31 appearances for Iowa State. This year, we mentioned gave her a win. I mean, the stats that Iowa State had had her at 0-3 heading into this weekend. She magically picked up a win somewhere. Congrats to her. Here's Riley Boone. She gets on a mile high, though. This could be trouble. Racing in is Ochoa. The second baseman, Andrews, nearly collides with Ranches to make the catch. And the inning is over. I mean, that communication, we saw it. That was a hit that would have gone off the wall. Here we go. To the fifth. Fifth innings brought to you by the Hal Smith Restaurant Groups. Enjoy great dining experiences at any of our restaurants. Carly Spellhog will lead things off. The first baseman takes the first pitch from Kelly Maxwell. Blown away, ball one. Sooners four. Iowa State nothing. So in our scoreboard update, brought to you by Air Comfort Solutions, Florida Atlantic and Wichita State tied up at seven. Look at that. 1-0 is hard hit to third. Off the glove of Brito. Picks it up. Throws. Got it. Good focus. Good stick to by Brito. And there's one away. Here's Camille Merrick. I have decided if any of you would like to join on my Twitter feed and Blank Show. Uh, I'm, it's still a work in progress. I'm putting together a list of just softball scores. So I've, I have every big program. I've got 32 so far, a lot of work to do. It's just our scoreboards are so unreliable in softball. Here's the first pitch to Camille Marin. First pitch, checked her swing, takes it low, ball one. Marin, a strikeout victim early. Miami of Ohio and Georgia are playing today. It's 3-2 to two after the first. <laughs> <laughs> How about that? The 1-0. That ball's hammered. Deep to right field. Boone on the horse. Watches it take a hop and hit the wall. Marin will have a long single. And that's two hard hit balls to right field off Maxwell. Nicole, any concerns there? I don't think so. It was just consistency on that side of the plate so as long as it's isolated i think jen rocha has done a great job calling this game it has been effective so far but now that you're headed towards the bottom of that second lineup or second time through the lineup about to start the third time through you're gonna have to start mixing it up kelly maxwell has been using that back door which has been working beautifully but as a hitter you see that you go okay if you're a righty, look for outside. If you're a lefty, look for inside. And you're not getting too much else. It's easy to make that adjustment. So I think Jen Rocha pretty soon here will start mixing up speeds, start mixing up. First pitch is fouled off to Andrews. Different locations. heights, different locations. We had a pinch runner in the midst of that. First had said bus, and it is Ireland bus who is out there. Just double-checking, everyone. Not doubting anyone. I'm just... <laughs> Four zip Sooners, top of the fifth. One out single. The you know, one is up high to Andrews. Andrews on the day is 0 for 1. We've got a couple of other scores as we drift on here on a Saturday afternoon in Norman. 
I'm Nicole Mendez. I'm Chris Plank. Start of conference play across college softball. A 1-1, swing and a foul to play. How about the score from this morning? Florida State and Purdue, 15-9. I think Florida State, they're bad. Florida State won, by the way. Ridiculous. They're pitching. They've been struggling this year, so... It's good that their bats are alive. <laughs> <laughs> Here's I mean, the if you can't have one, you got to have the other. That's right. Runner at first, one away, the one, two, a little up. Hanson struggled to find the ball for a moment. A day after losing in Houston, Texas bounces back to win 9-2. to two. Houston got them last night 12-10. to 10. Talk about another offensive battle. 12-10. One two is sky to shallow right field. Riley Boone has a beat on this, makes the catch, and there's two away. Boone threw quickly behind Buss at first, who for some reason was kind of taking her time getting back to the bag. And here's Olivia Wardlow. Here's some other scores from the Big 12 today. Start a league play. The Texas Tech Red Raiders about, well, I say that. It's 6-6 now in the bottom of the sixth inning. I was going to say they're about to sweep BYU, but BYU's bounced back in that game. First pitch to Wardlow is low and away. That's where we're headed next weekend. But we got work to do on Tuesday. Double header against Tarleton State. Can you talk about the Kansas-UCF game? Just getting that score right here. I think that's the fee they didn't like. It is a 2-2 in the eighth. Pitches up high. Two balls and no strikes. Battle. UCF. Beat them pretty handily last night, 7-1, to one, and now they're in extra innings. I mean, how about the game last night between Oklahoma State and Baylor? That one was fun. I listened to that. Um, I listened to that game late last night. I was um, real, really impressed with Oklahoma State's tick to this in that game. Kids Hanson, by the way, used this opportunity to take a moment with a 2-0 count to jog out and chat with the lefty Maxwell. That was impressive from OSU. Here's the 2-0. Swing and a miss. Whatever K-9 said, it worked. <laughs> hey, throw this pitch past her bat. Don't let her hit it. <laughs> By the way, BYU. A grand slam home run in the bottom of the sixth. They've taken a 10-6 lead over Tech. How about that? 2-1. Strike two, right on the outside corner. And so Oklahoma State rallies to win an extra innings, a game that was one zip headed to the seventh, tied in one, and they not blew it open with three runs in the eighth, and they won it four to one. But Baylor has just taken the lead in the bottom of the sixth, one zip. Here's the one, two, two. Runner goes, throw down is on time. Online, she's out. But I think, I think he called her out on strikes, hadn't he? Out to double check if it was a strikeout at the plate. No, it was caught stealing at second base. So credit Kinsey Hansen with the caught stealing. And the first pitch to Jada Coleman. Shows bunt, pulls it back, takes strike one. So Kinsey Hansen continues what has been an incredible job that the Sooners have, have done for the most part this year in cutting down runners trying to snag a bag. Here's the 0-1 to Coleman who pops this one up down the left field line, slicing out of play. Coleman is one for one of the day. That is the third caught stealing that Hanson has had this season. But opponents stole five bases this past weekend against us. It was a bad weekend all around. Everybody knows it. Oh, two. Oh, that might. Oof. That bitch. Ooh, missed inside. Ball one. We'll take it. We will take it. <laughs> Jada Coleman will take it. <laughs> Barely a ball on the inside half. Here's the one-two pitch to the Sooner star center field. Headed home. That one's a little low and in two and two. Coleman doubled in the first. And was thrown out trying to stretch a fly ball fly out from Brito. Tagging from second to go to third on a fly ball to left field was thrown out. Walked and was thrown out 
kind of in, I guess, what you could say controversial fashion. The 2-2 is a soft slap foul. She got in a rundown between second and third. I still don't know, looking back on that, I'll have to go back and watch the tape. Uh, they're going to question whether or not Jada had laid down a bunt. Jamie Pinkerton is headed out. No, they're good. Um, we still got to go back and watch how Jada planted and somehow did not get tagged by the third baseman. She minor. did a pop-up slide. I, so she was going into the slide, it, wow. saw the ball was there, popped up early, and then took just off. took off. 2-2. Two, two. The agility, the athleticism. Ball three. What? <laughs> Pretty incredible. One, uh, three balls, two strikes. Four nothing Sooners. Bottom of the fifth inning. It's been a good battle here for Jada. The pitch. Another soft slap foul. Fifth innings brought to you by the Hal Smith Restaurant Group. Enjoy great dining experiences at any of our restaurants. They've moved to the top of the seventh in Provo. BYU up 10 to 6. Buddy Doug Hamilton down in Hockley, Texas, reports Baylor continuing to add to its lead. It's two zip headed to the top of the seventh inning. Here's the 3 2 to Jada. Another foul ball. Again, just foul ball, foul ball, foul ball. It was a two and one count. And she's continued to foul balls off, get it to the full count. It's a battle right now. They're in the bottom of the eighth in Orlando, 2-2, two two, Kansas and UCF. Looks like they may be headed towards the ninth. Here it's 4 nothing Sooners. Texas has already won today, forcing a rubber game tomorrow with Houston. I mean, they were going to play regardless, but 3-2, swing and a miss. Coleman's retired, and that is the first strikeout of a Sooner today. Jada Coleman did such a good job battling that at bat, but she was getting a lot of low pitches, and then that one just up in the zone, high enough to tempt you. But whenever it goes up, and continues to go, you have to keep the hands on top. Brito pops this one foul down the right field line and slicing off the net. Alyssa Brito on the game, flat out to left in the first, singled and drove in a run. For Brito, it was her 21st run batted in of the season, second on the team. I feel like flight out to left isn't the right description. <laughs> hey, that's a fair point, not going to lie. Or the way that the wind has really been subduing these hits. She hit it hard. No balls and a strike. Here's the pitch. Outside. One ball, one strike. Four runs on five hits for the Sooners. Kelly Maxwell has been masterful, allowing just two hits. Rito tried to check her swing. Didn't matter. It's a strike. That page that's a little bit higher than waist high, right below the letters. It's that late break, quick in the zone. That's the one that Jada Coleman swung and missed that too. Mm. Coleman had a nine pitch at bat. Here's the one two to Brito, way outside, two and two. So UCF has put a runner at first. Fascinating in real time watching the start of conference play. And then in that, in that, talking about BYU being in this conference. Here's the 2 2 to Brito. Well, that's a good spot, ball three. And I don't, I'm going to go out on a limb here, and I don't think Ralston was too happy about that being called a ball. She's taking a little extra walk. I don't think that limb needs to be very far because I'm going to be there right there with you. <laughs> Three balls and two strikes with one out. Sooner is looking to start a rally or at least a run scoring opportunity in the fifth, and they'll get the walk to Brito, who slams her bat, gets a little look from Ralston as she walks down to first base. Ralston did not like that. She walked alongside Brito, 
And she said something. I don't know what she said, but she said something. She was not happy. T.R.A. Jennings is 0 for 2. A couple of notes on milestones that are upcoming for Jennings as she digs in. First pitch. And the right-handed throwing Ralston headed home with the runner first. She takes it on the inside corner for a strike. Ralston, or Jennings, excuse me, <laughs> needs one hit in her career. As Patty Gasso is going to have a pinch runner here. Coach came in a little bit late. Looks like it looks like looks like Maya Bland's going to pinch run. Interesting. There might be something that she wants to chat with Brito about. And uh, you get the speed of Bland. Why not get some insurance out there? Jennings needs one hit to tie Kelly Breich for eighth on OU's all-time list. And with her next double, she'll tie the legendary Lisa Carey for second on OU's all-time list. So how about you accomplish both of those with one swing of the bat right here, T.R.A.? Two birds, one stone. Nice little double into the left field (laughs) gap. Here's the 0-1 pitch. That's a little bit out. They're working it too far outside for that prediction to come true. Just a silent but yet personality-filled standout. Runner goes. The throw is way offline. Into center field. Get up, Maya. Get up. Oh, she didn't see it in time. Good job backing it up by Ochoa. Yeah, she was slow to get up. I wonder if she might have also knocked a little wind out of her potentially. I was thinking that the dive that she had, it was almost instead of there's a sliding dive and then there's Mm -hmm. a jumping dive, it looked like the latter. And from what I've heard, this field is pretty tough. So whenever you jump on that, (laughs) it might get the wind knocked out of you. Six for six on stolen base opportunities in her career as Jennings swings through the 2-1 for strike two. I don't have the Sooners being credited with a stolen base any other time this game. So, with that stolen base for the Sooners, they have improved their number on the season to 24 of 26. Jennings doesn't chase the 2-2 up and away, ball three. And it's just so interesting looking at the numbers that they've had as far as stolen bases. I I think back to the office the offenses that coach gasso has had and how she changes them and how that affects the there's a rocket into this netting down the left field line foul (laughs) full count three balls and two strikes Runner at second is the pinch runner, Maya Bland. Sooners up four zip. The pitch to Jennings. Popped up behind home plate. That's going to get out of play. Oh. It's off the roof. I almost timed that right, didn't <laughs> you I? You did. Sooners grabbed a 1-0 lead in this game in the third after a leadoff single by Alina Torres. The pinch runner, Avery Hodge, scored on an RBI single from Alyssa Brita. Three-run homer from Sanders. 3-2. Lifted to left center field. Easy play for Ochoa. The center fielder makes the catch. Two away. Tough stretch for Jennings. She's 0 for 3 today. And here's Kinsey Hansen. Talk about somebody who hasn't gotten on base a lot. But Jennings, she's made solid contact. And just the ability to bring that ball down just a little bit, not get caught up in the wind. Hansen on the day is, oh, there's my extra hit I've given the Sooners. I gave Hansen a single in the first inning. They have ruled it an error. That was our, pardon me, the second inning. First pitch to Kinsey is in for a strike. I had this entire game. Oh, you with one extra hit. <laughs> Where did it come from? Well, I mean, that we, ball is, is so, so hard. hard, so hard. We give we give Thomas, uh, who is taking over as the media relations guy this year, give him a hard time over scoring sometimes because he's a great dude. The 0-1 catches the outside corner. One ball, one strike. 
uh, pardon me, no balls and two strikes. And we were joking with him about, and there's been a few of those that you've been kind and not giving the air to the uh, uh, Yeah. He could, he could turn that back on that one in the second inning. Hanson's behind 0-2 here. Love to see this run get home. Pitch to Kana. Way outside to the backstop. Here comes Bland to third. Coach Casso will hold her there. That's a wild pitch. Unofficially the second wild pitch. And if you're Kenzie Hansen, get a ball hit hard like that again. This defense at infield, they are back. <laughs> They're giving her yeah. a lot of space, but I mean the way that she's hit her last two at bats, it's mm. been ridiculous. Here's the one two pitch to K9. Swing and a miss. Iowa State had not had a strikeout from its pitching staff the entire game. And here in the fifth, Ralston gets the strikeout of both Coleman. Learn about spring membership specials and the advantages of belonging to a private club by scheduling a private tour today. Visit trailsgolf.com. And Bob Moore Ford is proud to honor service members through the Patriot of the Game. To nominate a Patriot, visit bobmoreford.com slash hero. With Nicole Mendez, I'm Chris Blank. We go to the top of the sixth inning. 4 nothing, Oklahoma. Wardlow will lead things off for Iowa State. First pitch from Maxwell, low and in for a ball. It is a final in Waco. Baylor has beaten Oklahoma State two to nothing. They will play a rubber game tomorrow in Waco. Here's the one-zero pitch, up high, two balls and no strikes. And Baylor's just Glenn Moore's got to be kicking himself. They had that game one last night. They did. It is a final as well in Orlando. The 1-1 pitch. I thought we were 2-0 count. I think it's 2-1. Did the umpire correct that? Uh, Not one ball, two no, strikes. Second, there we go. Second pitch was a yeah, strike. That's right. One ball, two strikes. Maxwell's ready. Here's the pitch. Line drive, left field falling fast onto the glove of Pickering. Passed her towards the wall. Coleman cuts it off, fires back in a strike, and it's a leadoff double for Olivia Wardlow, who was at the plate when Buss was caught stealing on a pitch that we all thought was strike three. And that'll be a double. That's a tough spot for Pickering, right? As a former outfielder, tough to play that one. Yeah, and honestly, I think she's right in diving for that. The way... The area that she dove in, it was shallow left center. I think she dove to get that one. So we're challenging something. I wonder if they're challenging if she stepped out of the box. And if it is that, it becomes a strike on the batter, not an out. It becomes just a strike, but I I like it. Why not? It's a challenge. You're late in the game. I mean, haven't challenged yet. This is what's tough too. Is look at that line. I mean, it's it's really tough to see. You should be able to see. It's any part of her foot that's out of the box, right? Yeah. Like it doesn't have to be a certain percentage of the foot, does it? Patty Gasso's challenging it. So, boy, what a day for Noble McIntyre. He throws his strike to start things out with his first pitch, and we have our second official review. Brought to you by Noble McIntyre and McIntyre Law. The law firm you should turn to for all your personal injury needs. Did you get a good look at it? I, I think I think it's going to be a judgment call, but there has to be, again, enough to be able to say as an umpire definitively, yeah, her foot was out. Right. So I, I think it could go either way. UCF has beaten Kansas 3-2. to two. Remember how I said that game seemed destined for eight innings? <laughs> I, I, I would be incorrect. Oh, you know what? I was correct. I was about to in say, the bottom I, of the, I feel like you, you delivered. In the bottom of the eighth inning, they're going to say safe. She didn't step out of the bat. Evans had the game-winning double. 
and UCF takes this series, its first Big 12 series from Kansas. Texas, after losing last night 12 to 10, has beaten Houston 9 to 2. There are no games tonight in the Big 12 outside of the one here at Love's Field. So the first Sunday of the Big 12 season will feature, well, at least for now, two rubber games. Here's Malaysia Ochoa with a runner at second and nobody out. First pitch from Maxwell is low. BYU salvages a game in its series with, well, that's not final yet. Let's hold off yet. They're at the top of the seven. It's now 10 to 8. Look out. Get in that mountain there. A lot of swings left. 21 combined hits in that game. The 1-0 is in the dirt. Two balls and no strikes. There is some activity down in the Sooner pin. Some jostling around. I see Jocko looking out, our bullpen catcher, one of our many rock stars that have that job for Coach Gasso and Coach Rosa, uh, Rocha. 2-0 is fouled away. And that hits off the overhang and comes straight back down to the field. How about for Iowa State? Getting that leadoff runner on second, you get the most productive part of your lineup up. I'm sure Kelly Maxwell, because she's entering her third time through the lineup, she knows that. Yeah. <laughs> and she's saying, I have room to go, Here's but I want to be tight. 2 1 is a little low. Three Allen. balls and a strike. <laughs> that Jada, one was tight. Jada Coleman throws her arms up from center field. <laughs> Sooner infield remains unchanged with Sanders at first. Hodge has been in for a couple of innings at second. Jennings at short, Brito at third. That battery of Maxwell and Kinsey Hansen goes up to chase ball four. And Iowa State mounting a rally here in the sixth. It's 4 nothing Sooners. Sooners lost their first challenge. Now Iowa State looking to get back in this game. One swing of the bat. Angelina Allen can do that. She's got eight home runs this season. And most of their RBI. She has 26. Here's the first pitch from Maxwell. Allen takes a strike. But a little bit of off speed from Kel. I will okay. say I will say this much. The numbers for Kelly Maxwell versus lefties is ridiculous on the season so far. Here's the 0-1 pitch to the lefty. Hard hit ball right side. Hodge stays down, goes to second for one. Everyone else is safe. Tiari Jennings being able to hang on to that ball. Hodge let go of that quick, but that throw was a little low. I think Jennings actually wasn't on the bag, but she tagged the runner out at second before she got there. That's what Pinkerton's asking the umpire right now, and he's going to go for a review. All right, so you get two of them. You get two. Might as well go ahead and use them, right? Another official review brought to you by our buddy Noble, Noble McIntyre and McIntyre Law. Oh, he's just thrilled. He should be. <laughs> the law firm you should turn to for all your personal injury needs. Let, let me follow. And reviews. <laughs> and reviews, right? Um. You said you felt like she may have missed the bag, but still got her on the tag. Yeah, right? so okay. that throw was so low, it actually brought Jennings off the bag. She wasn't able to keep her foot on. From what I saw, it looks like she tagged the runner out at second, but her foot wasn't on it. If you're a coach being her tenure thinking, I didn't see the foot on, or maybe the runner got her foot underneath before the tag was applied. I think this is a good challenge for him to do because you – you don't get the – you win the challenge. You have right. bases loaded. Nobody out. Nobody out. Tyne runs at the plate. And your second most productive RBI hitter up. Hmm. I mean, a ball deep in the gap, that might put you within one. We mentioned Kelly Maxwell as we went on this McIntyre Law official review. The – Base hit by Wardlow, a lefty, was only the fifth hit she's given up this season to a left-handed hitter. Lefties are hitting 111 against Kelly Maxwell this year. 12 strikeouts, one walk. 
righty sitting 246. She has been pretty fantastic against Iowa State in her career. A little lengthy review here. Four starts. We mentioned defense has kind of let her down a bit. But she is 3-2 and two overall against Iowa State with a 1.5 ERA, 28 innings. So through the five and uh, anybody out? Yeah, five and a third, she has thrown 33 career innings against Iowa State. That's pretty wild. I mean, she is that girl. I don't know how else to describe Kelly Maxwell, but I think it's also – Oh, here come the umpires. Oh, let's see. Yep, they say she's out. Now, Iowa State is out of challenges, but if the umpires come together and decide they need to look at something for clarity, they can still do that. It just, Jamie Pinkerton just can't officially say I'm challenging this. Coach Gasso has been an absolute pro at not having to use a challenge and talking the umpires into looking at it. <laughs> she All should right. have been a lawyer. She could have been. <laughs> first and third now for Miner. Back to action. And that first pitch is dirty. Drops right in for strike one. Miner on the game is 0 for 2, a strikeout victim in the first. One of six strikeout victims for Kelly Maxwell. But she hasn't had a strikeout since the second inning. Now... Maxwell is saying something to T.R.A. Jennings. Looks like she's having some equipment problems. She's good. She said something to T.R.A., and now they're ready. No balls and a strike. I wonder if they were having a couple of equipment issues. Here's the pitch. A little bit low. Kelly is wearing the pitch caller. Is that the digital pitch caller? Is that what we're going with? What, what, what do you guys call it ESPN? I don't know. I've just been calling it the watch. I like that. I like that. The pitch watch. Here's the 1-1. One, one. Swing and a miss. That's Strike two. Ball. That was nasty. Oh. Hey, it's a Late final. <laughs> final in Provo. BYU salvages a game of its series against Texas Tech. They won it 10-8. to eight. Congrats to the Cougars on their first Big 12 win. Here's the one-two pitch to Ashley Miner. Just stays alive. Here in Norman, 4 nothing Sooners in the top of the sixth inning. And you can see from Iowa State this inning, their swings have gotten, I don't want to say long because they don't look long, but that back arm, that extension is long through the zone. Kelly, she's starting to come in tight on the hands of both of these sides of the plate. Makes it hard with that swing pass. One, two, way up high, two and two. Wardlow stands at third after leading this inning off with a double that Pickering went all out to try to make a diving play on in left field, and it just got under her glove. Here's the 2 2 pitch. Low, good job by Hanson to block it. Two balls and two strikes. Mm. I feel like, I don't know, I'm looking out at the crowd. They're a little quiet today. Must be the weather. Keeping those hands warm. I didn't realize how cold it was when I opened up the booth the whole way. Oh, mine's in my pouch right now. (laughs) Full count pitch, Maxwell stares in. The runner from first will go, we think, and this ball skied a mile high into center field. Jada Coleman under it, catches it. The runner fakes a tag because the throw was on time on line no chance of tagging from third as Wardlow will stay there and watch and Jada Coleman Nicole Mendez play that to perfection I mean you could see her you said it it was sky high plenty of time you could see her force herself to wait behind let that ball get a little bit lower before she tried to run up on it she gave herself the momentum She got there in a hurry. That ball got in there so quick. You Mm. still have runners on the corners. First and third. The runner at first, Allen couldn't even advance. First pitch to Ranchez is up and in ball one. Game number two today. Again, this is two separate games. 
it's slated to start at 5, but they will clear the stadium, so I'd have a little bit of time between games, the 1-0. Good spot. I mean, that curveball, Mindy, you've talked about it. Wow. One ball, one strike. And we were talking about we saw Iowa State make the adjustment. They had those hard hits. You were saying, are you worried about it? I think this is an adjustment that Coach Rocha has made is going tight in on the hands. 1-1, one, one, a little bit out, two balls and a strike. Branches does have a double. Struck out looking in the first, doubled in the fourth. One for two on the day for the Iowa State shortstop. Here's the 2-1 pitch. Ooh, in on her hands. Cold strike! Ranches turned away like it almost hit her. And the home plate umpire, Naomi Ertl, said, uh-uh, that's on the black. Two balls, two strikes. Ranches is towed up just a little bit on that line, too. 2-2, two, two, fouled away. That can make that inside pitch feel really difficult to hit. But I think the reason why she's towed up is that back to work. I mean, mm. Kelly's done such a good job all game long. Even if she is pounding the inside half, she could always go to that back door at any moment. So as a hitter, you don't want to give up that spot, especially with two strikes. Battle until you get it. Here comes the 2-2. Low full count. Deanna Poole is slated to hit next. Indeed, she is in the on-deck circle. Well, now there's no doubt the runner from first will be going. Here's the 3-2 pitch from Kelly Maxwell with two outs in the sixth. Got it. Swinging. Kelly Maxwell climbed the ladder. Alicia Ranchez couldn't catch up. To the bottom of the sixth, 4 nothing Sooners. Cassidy Pickering will lead things off. Sooner left-handed hitting left fielder. It's one for two on the day. Singled, scored a run. Grounded out back to the pitcher in the second. And first pitch is a little inside. Ball one. Flags softly sway towards softly the left field sway. line. Well, I was going to say lazily <laughs> sl- sway, but I mean, they're, they're moving. The 1-0 is high. Gentle. Gentle, Yes. American flag, the Oklahoma flag, the OU flag, all positioned beyond the left field wall and the left field grandstands. Loves scoreboard straight away in center field. As the 2-0 catches the inside corner, 2-1. and one. No batter's eye here. You got Gasso's Garden in center field. Is that where we're calling it? For Is that now. the official I need, name? I need more. Uh, Boone's Farm got shot down. So the Boone's Farm? Yeah, that's. I mean, it's a farm. <laughs> Here's the 2-1 inside, 3-1. and one. So, Gasso's Garden out in center field. Okay, hear me out, Chris Plank. I'm, I'm game for anything. Ditch the garden, put some seats in there, and all the alumni get to sit there. Oh, that's not a bad idea. Right? Here's the 3-1, swing and a miss, strike two. Boy, that would just be dangerous. There is room for expansion. Can you imagine Jess Schultz leading the way there? Uh, I, I probably could. Kelsey Arnold, Kaylee Clifton. 3-2, ball four outside. And we should also mention before anyone sends a tweet, I'll save it for you. There is no official rule about a batter's eye in softball. But I'm willing to bet if you did make that alumni seating, it would probably last two games. <laughs> because there would be something that would make it impossible for the for the visitors to see. Now, looks like Hannah Core is going to pinch run here. Indeed, she will. And that's what the delay is. And as any good coach would, Iowa State's going to use this as an opportunity to go chat. It's become my favorite thing. Anytime one side calls a timeout, the other side gets to take advantage of it. And usually, their timeouts end up lasting longer than the one who actually <laughs> called it. Not in this case as Katie Sanad, who has been, she's been with Jamie for a while. They're at Iowa State, heads back towards the Iowa State dugout. We'd like to thank our OU Community Outreach Partners, Fowler Auto Group, OU Health, 
OG&E and Coca-Cola, the University of Oklahoma Athletics, is one with you. Hannah Core will indeed pinch run here. You know what I haven't told you about? Our orthodontics exclusively captain of the game. You are keeping secrets from me, Chris Blank. Tell me about it. I will <laughs> as soon as I dig it up. Ella Parker <laughs> heads to the play. Ella's walked and been hit by a pitch. She steps in when the Sooners up four is it. Checked her swing on a ball up and in. I think she's ready to hit something this at bat. Oh, they checked with the first base umpire, and they say strike. And Patty Gasso can't believe it. I mean, it didn't even look like she came close to going. What are we doing over there, Kaylee Young? What are we doing? Here's the 0 1 pitch, swinging to miss strike two. Haley Radabaugh, Ray Ball, nine year olds, a nine year old from Norman, attends Little Axe. So welcome, Hadley. So glad you and the family are here as the junior captain of the game. Swing and a miss. Man, that's not a pretty at bat for Ella Parker, and there's one away. If you want to be the next junior captain, learn more at Orthodontics exclusively. The ultimate fan experience for children 6 through 12, two locations in Norman and South Oklahoma City. Visit orthoexc.com. All right, one away. That's the third strikeout for Ralston. Here's Sid Sanders. Homered earlier. Gave the Sooners that three-run shot, the four-zip lead, as the first pitch is a little bit out ball one. I I didn't think she had got all of it off the bat, but she did. And it bounced out of here. 1-0. Runners going really late break for core, but she still snags the bag. <laughs> That's how you know she's just that fast. She broke late and still beat that throw by a step and a half. <laughs> so much on stealing bags that is underappreciated, I think, in our sport, and that is the timing of it, though. Just base running in general. Everything, yeah. So underappreciated, but such a difference maker, honestly. One ball and one strike. That misses. Oh, caught that lower edge of the strike zone. Four nothing Sooners, four runs on five hits. Remember, we'll see Maxwell to try to finish this out in the seventh. Iowa State threatened in the top half of the sixth, but she shut him down. Here's the one two pitch to Sanders. She had a cut, fouled it straight back. Sanders' season average, by the way, is now up to 333. 14 runs batted in for Sidney Sanders. Runner at second is core. Here's the one-two pitch. Up high, two and two. Sanders hit 425 her freshman year at Arizona State. and has kind of struggled to find consistency, but she has a hit now in four straight games for the Sooners. Two-two is low ball three. You talked about, yes, she has been struggling, and I think it's obvious Coach Gasso has kept her in the lineup. She wants Sid Sanders in the lineup. She's telling her, I'm going to keep you in. Don't feel pressured that I'm going to take you out in the game. I just want you to find your groove and hit it. 3-2. Had a piece. Had a cut. Fouled it straight back. But she she has double-digit walks. And she only has 34 at-bats. So that's almost a third of her at-bats have been walks. Mm. Talk about patience. Talk about battling. And at bats, going from 0-2 to full. Here comes the 3-2 pitch. Sanders turned on it, and that'll get oohs and ahs as it's fouled away. And way out of here. <laughs> Chilly day. But as we said in our Trails Golf Club weather report, trailsgolf.com, what we're experiencing right now and throughout this doubleheader Saturday is significantly warmer and more comfortable and more pleasant than anything we've had to, would have had to deal with <laughs> <There's> on <sun>. Friday. <laughs> That's the first thing. There's sun yeah, there's, today. The sun is out. It's gorgeous. 
Not a cloud in the sky. Here comes the 3-2 full count pitch to uh, Sanders with Core at second. Ball four. You just... You sense a different demeanor for her at the plate. Something... You, something's clicking for her. And knowing from a coach's perspective, whenever a hitter is struggling, you want to be able to give them a little bit of extra time. You want to be able to have them talk through their own swing to feel comfortable. I can almost guarantee that JT has worked with her in the cages a little bit of extra. She, Sid Sanders herself, has probably worked a little bit extra as well. Quincy Lilio will pinch run here. It's 4 0 Sooners. We're in the bottom of the sixth inning. And Alina Torres will re enter. Avery Hodge pinch ran for her in the third, grounded out to short, then did Hodge in the fourth. Torres so far today is one for one with a run scored. Re entering for the Sooners, number 40, So here we go. Torres will hit. Q, Quincy Lilio, pinch running at first. Hannah Core, pinch running at second. Oh, you're looking to add to its four zip lead here in the bottom of the sixth inning with Riley Boone waiting on deck. First pitch to Torres in for a strike. That's a pretty, pretty pitch. Good pitch. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking the same thing. I was like, ooh. I'm glad I'm glad you saw that Oof. too. And Torres after she just kinda she took a little walk, shook her yeah. head. She knew, man. That was pretty good. Here's the 0 one. Fouled off the face mask of the catcher Marin. Ooh. Gonna give her a second to recover. Jamie Pinkerton right out of the dugout to check on his catcher. That thing I mean straight back off the bat, and they're gonna bring out the athletic trainer. Yeah, that one hit back hard. The first pitch left over the plate. That one also left over the plate. Torres, you just missed that. This is something that we're very much learning about that I don't think anyone cared about for the better part of the last ever in baseball and softball is how badly those foul balls back to the face mask of the catcher hurts. (laughs) And the potential for concussions and trying to play through it looks like Looks like Marin's going to be okay. Yeah. Sooner softball brought to you by OG&E. og e we energize life. And as a meeting at the circle will now follow us up, uh, follow that up, gives us a second to tell you about the people of Oklahoma Oil and Natural Gas, deeply invested in our state, voluntarily cleaning land associated with well sites that were abandoned 50, even 100 years ago. They've now invested more than $155 million to clean over 20 thousand historic well sites at no cost to landowners across the state people of oklahoma oil and natural gas here we go all the meetings i think are over first and second for the sooners one out and oh two count on torres the pitch low one ball two strikes And a core big lead a lot of speed over at second anything that gets through the infield core scoring no problem. One, two. Oh, that was dirty and just missed. I mean, she took something off it. Torres buckled at her knees, but it just missed low. And it didn't miss by much. Two balls, two strikes. Four nothing Sooners. We're in the bottom of the sixth inning. The pitch. Outside. Full we'll count. Second at bat in a row where the hitter's gone from 0 2 back to full count. Mm. Battle making her throw. And I think this is also the third inning that Oklahoma has faced this pitcher. So they're they're getting used to what they're seeing. Does it make it easier to hit? No, but they're getting used to it. 3 2 is hard hit to short off. One hop, a beautiful play by Ramos goes to Sa- our ranches, goes to second for one. They will not have a play. At first, I mean, Ranches has been pretty fantastic. Torres reaches on the fielder's choice. Core advances to second. Ranches had the error in the second. 
but she's handled some she's hard amazing. hits her way. <laughs> Today is the eighth doubleheader the Sooners have played in the first 20 games of the season. That's light work. Being game number 21. First pitch to Boone. Got away from the catcher, but not far enough for Core to try to break for home. She thought about it, though. She did. Even gave it that little jab step like she was coming. <laughs> Booney on the day is 0 for 3. Grounded to short, grounded back to the pitcher, popped out to second. She if, see if she can drop one into that left or right center field gap and run for a while. The 1-0 pitch is a little bit out. Two balls and no strikes. Jada Coleman waits on deck. You know she's probably a little bit fired up about her last at bat whenever she struck out. Boone's been good at extending innings all season long. Clutch two-out hitting. Here's the 2-0. Runner goes late. The throw will be cut off, and Torres will be able to walk right to the bag with a stolen base. It's a, that's a nice way. Patty Gasso is going to call a timeout here. You get one of these per half inning. It's two balls and a strike. They did call that a strike on Boone. But of all the ways we've seen the first and third defended, the second baseman or shortstop, depending on who's in charge of it, that catches the ball well short of the bag has always been my favorite. Yeah. Because it involves a little acting in it too, right? Right. And whenever you have speed like Cora third, you want to yeah. tempt her into breaking yeah. home, getting her a couple steps farther away from third. Meeting over, the 2-1 to Boone popped up. Shallow center field. But Shoa comes in, calls off everybody, makes the catch, and the inning is over. Oklahoma strands a couple more, but as we head to the seventh, Sooners three outs away from win number 20. Iowa State down to its final three. Final three outs. Sooners lead it 4 nothing as we head to the seventh. Hannah Core is going to stay in the game and play left field. Four in left, Coleman in center, Boone in right. An infield of Sanders, Torres, and Sanders at first, Torres at second. Jennings at short. Brito at third. Kelly Maxwell will indeed try to close out this solid performance against Iowa State. First pitch, low and away, ball one. What do you make of what Maxwell has done so far today? This is what I wanted to see as a bounce back of not just being able to be dominant, but the counts I feel like she has been in, they've been favorable, or even if she's missing. Like there, 2-0. Oh. Even if she's missing wide, she always comes back. She's been peppering the zone pretty well. I think she's only thrown two balls in a row about four times this whole game. Tiana Poole. Lined out to short, crowded out to Maxwell. 0 for 2. That skips in for ball 3. Maxwell nods, kicks the dirt at the front of the circle. Digging through some scores that we'll be able to get to in the Bud Light postgame show. Conference play getting underway all across college softball this weekend. Kelly Maxwell with one on the pit, on the activity clock, the action clock. Gets a strike, three and one. I keep saying pitch clock, action clock, activity clock. They're calling it an activity clock. <laughs> We're, weird verbiage there. I can't make up my mind which one I like more. Here's the three-one pitch from Kelly Maxwell. Ball four. But some other scores we were keeping an eye on across college softball. Been very intrigued in that Georgia-Miami of Ohio game. Georgia and Miami of Ohio played a game that went seven last night. I think they're still hitting home runs from that game. That was wild. As Carly Spellhog digs in with a runner at first and nobody out in the first pitch is outside for a ball. Miami of Ohio has a 4-3 to three lead over George in the bottom of the fifth inning. I think they're going to get them. Now I'm going to update the score. It's going to be like 20-6. to six. No, 4-3. <laughs> to three, top six. Here's the 1-0. Oh, good spot. Let me call that. Call that a ball or a strike. 
Hanson quickly threw down to first. Ball two. Wow. She, excuse me. I just talked about Ugh. Kelly. Okay, she's been so great. Six balls. Yeah, Jen Roach sees it too. She's calling time. You are here in the top of the seventh. You have a good lead. Go after. Mm -hmm. Go after these hitters. End it. End it. Don't leave all the work that you've done all game long, which has been so great. And we talk about the back door. Talk about that dirty curveball in on the hands of righties. Don't leave it unfinished. Talked about keys to the game. Put it in the pocket. Put it in the pocket. Explain that one. That's a Coach Gasso-ism. In a conference series, you're going to face him three times. That first one, you want to grab that win. You want to put it in your back pocket and move on. But that first one, you want to snatch that one. Put it in your pocket. All right, meetings are over. Jen Rocha back to the Sooner dugout. Here's the 2-0 from Maxwell. Bounced foul down the third baseline. Spellog struck out in the second. Grounded out to third in the fifth. 4 nothing Sooners. No, you looking to improve to 20-1 and one on the season then turn around and play game two here in a bit. Here comes the 2-1 pitch in the dirt. Good job by Hanson, but it squirts away from her, and off to second goes Poole on the wild pitch. Spellhog, her last at-bat, she had a hard hit. And it just looks like Kelly is trying to pitch a little bit too carefully. Yep, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Here's the 3-1 pitch, fouled straight back. You, you could not have called in more perfectly, Nicole. She has been lights out so far. Unofficially for, I don't keep saying unofficially. Maxwell, six innings, three <laughs> unofficially hits. Unofficially, six innings. Yeah, I mean, I think that's pretty official. Six innings, three hits, seven strikeouts, but has walked three. Full count pitch. Got her, but the ball popped out of the mitt of Hanson. Nearly a foul tip strikeout. We'll do it again. Three balls, two strikes. Maxwell brings it home. Grounded foul down the third baseline. Good pitch, tight. In on the hands, that curveball that goes coast to coast. That was the one that she looked like she didn't want to throw earlier that at bat. Mm -hmm. She was just nibbling or she was missing low because she wasn't finishing sharp and firm it's a good pitch three balls two strikes again the pitch popped up shallow right field foul territory sanders races out makes the catch what a job by sid sanders she is a solid an excellent defensive first baseman she chases that down in foul territory and there's one away. I mean, Here's talk Camille about Barrett. range. There's a point in that foul ball territory. It's in shallow right mm -hmm. where that left field wall and that line meet. Sanders, she was all the way out there. She was just <laughs> jogging to that ball. First pitch in the dirt, ball one. Well, this is a little embarrassing. I haven't had my computer plugged in the whole game, and it just went dead. <laughs> How did that happen? Hey, we've been there, done that. Helps when you plug it in. You know, what's embarrassing is I slipped off my shoes. <laughs> <laughs> the 1-0 foul back. Didn't even notice. Couldn't even tell. <laughs> Ball and a strike. To Camille Marin, who is one for two in the game. Marin, the strikeout victim in the second. That's one of the seven strikeouts that... Kelly Maxwell has. She has one of the three Iowa State hits. The 1-1. One, one. Oh, that just missed low and in. 2-1. and one. I mean, it almost looks like it's coming from a completely different arm angle, and it just takes off. <laughs> and it missed. Barely. Two balls and a strike. Here's the pitch from Maxwell. 
Little I didn't mean to. Check swing foul. Full count. We'll get you through all the uh, X's and O's from this one in the Bud Light Post Game Show. And then get a little break, grab a bite, get ready for game two tonight. And almost around. We're almost there. Almost there. Sooners two outs away. Here's the 2-2 pitch from Maxwell. I mean, that is unfair. Got her looking on some pure filth on the inside corner. Strikeout number eight for Kelly Maxwell. Another backwards K, and there's two away. Coach Gasso said, this is a great matchup for Kelly. We want to give her the start. Eight Ks in the game. Not bad. Two away. Here's McKenna Andrews. She's 0 for 2. First pitch swinging. Fouls it back. And whenever she is firm on that front side, that curveball that goes on that, starts on the outer half, I think goes in on the hands of some righties. That is such a good pitch. Mm -hmm. I, I did not see that pitch last weekend. That one looks so good. Here's the 0-1 pitch. Grounded through the 5-6 hole in the left field. Wisely hold the runner as third. <laughs> Core just sprinted the ball in. I, I have to laugh at that one. Hannah Core fielded that mid-left field. I mean, it was a gentle lead off at third, but by no means was a runner going. Hannah Core literally sprinted in from left field all the way to the pitcher <laughs> to give her the ball. Oh, the t we, we have a wardrobe malfunction. A wardrobe malfunction for our umpire. Now we're good. <laughs> the buzzer for the pitch clock is on the back belt loop of our third base umpire. Buzzer, the timer of our third base umpire. Buzzer when it runs out. Brad Newton. We're good to go. All right. Well, first and third. Maxwell versus Wardlow. First pitch is a little bit up, ball one. Wardlow did something her last at bat that rarely happens. A lefty getting a hit on the left-handed throwing Maxwell. One ball and no strikes. First and third. Four nothing sooner is the pitch. That's so good. Right on the outside corner for a strike. One and one. Outfield is in, infield a few steps in. They're ready for the speed from Wardlow. Here's the 1 1. Swing and a miss, strike two. Now, now the Sooners are a strike away. I mean, not surprised here, but that was Kelly Maxwell's 12th swing and miss. She is so good. She's been solid here today, looking to put the finishing touches on a Sooner dub. The one two popped up, trouble, center field, racing in and is in a core to make the catch. And Oklahoma holds off the pesky Iowa State, State Cyclones on a dominating Saturday from Kelly Maxwell. The final score Oklahoma four, Iowa State zero.